Hi guys, let me try to explain you this crazy little thing called Focusrite Mix Control, which is a little bit difficult to understand at the beginning for most, um, and uh, yeah, I will try to help you out a little bit. So first of all, basically that's a mixer, yeah, that's why it's called Mix Control, right? And uh, actually, no, it's not one mixer, it's plenty of mixers, it's uh, either up to eight stereo mixers, or up to 16 mono mixers. And each individual mixer, you can see up here the tabs. We have the stereo mix called monitor mix. We have another stereo mix and another one and so on and so on. And here you can even see two mono mixes. Now let's say I want to switch this one here to mono. I want to create two mono mixes instead of one stereo mix. That's relatively simple because here in the master fader of this particular mix, I can just disable the stereo button here and immediately it switches to two mono mixes. Of course I can name them um, if I go to the same master fader of this particular selected mix when I just click here and I call it uh, whatever uh, mono mix for example and it e immediately it shows up here that you are currently dealing with a mono mix. Now let's switch it back to stereo for now and uh, let's call it uh, Q-Mix 1. That would be the mix that goes to the headphones of the vocalist when you're recording something, because he wants to listen something slightly different than you want to listen on your monitor mix in your studio. Because maybe for him it's important to uh, hear less of the drums, but maybe he wants a little bit more of the acoustic guitar or something, whatever. But you want to, to listen to a different kind of mix. That's why we separate this. And uh, how can we make sure that the, the vocalist will listen to the cue mix while you listen to the monitor mix through your studio speakers, studio monitors? For this, uh, we will go to the router page of the mix control. And he, uh, here you see all the outputs that are available on your interface. There might be less outputs in your interface. For mine, it has quite a few outputs, but the basic principle is the same. So for example, in my interface, I have two monitor outputs here, and to these monitor outputs, I send the monitor mix. So I hear them through the, my studio monitors. And then I have uh, two headphone outputs on my interface. One of them is linked to the line output 7 and 8, and the other headphones output is linked to the uh, line outputs 9 and 10. So, for example, the vocalist will take the headphones one, so I just send him from the mixers the Q-Mix one left, and, of course, the Q-Mix one right. So now, on his headphones, he will have the Q-Mix, and he can have separate volume settings for him. For example, his own vocals, there's the microphone one. You can see the levels here because I'm talking through microphone one right now and then he wants to listen uh, to the KPA, uh, to the profiler, Kemper profiler and maybe a little bit of effects, voice live we want to add and uh, whatever, keyboard maybe a little bit from the Kronos and this way you can make an individual mix for the vocalist while you at the same time, if we switch back to the monitor mix, you can have a totally different mix. For example, in this case right now we have muted all other stuff. I just listen to the vocal so I can focus on it while he's singing. Maybe I want something different. I can set up whatever I want and it's different to the Q-Mix one. And of course, if you are dealing with a whole band, you can make more Q-Mixes for the guitarist, for the drummer, for the keyboarder, for the bassist, whatever. Yeah, And you just have to make sure that you send it to the corresponding outputs yeah, that's basically the concept, why you have many mixers here. Now, uh, one more thing. Uh, of course, you, you can use these mixes or mixers for different purposes. For example, you have your Kemper and sometimes you want to reamp the eye track or something. Then, yeah, why not? You can create a special mix for that, the reamp mix. And the reamp mix 
we want to send to the camper. So how do we do that? For this, we have the SPDIF output of our interface, and there I send from the mixers the reamp mix mono because the camper only listens for reamping to the left channel of the SPDIF output. So we don't have to assign anything to the other, to the second, to the right output of the SPDIF. And that's also the reason why I switched this mix to mono. Yeah, this is not enabled. And now we have to focus on a little bit different stuff. Uh, the inputs in this mixer. You have plenty of inputs and you can select which one you want to assign to a specific mixer channel or mixer fader. For example here, analog in one, that would be my microphone, which is assigned to this particular fader. That's perfectly fine and you can map all your analog inputs, for example. You can even map the SPDIF inputs to this KPA, fader, stereo channel. But you can use other stuff as well. For example, you can use stuff that is coming from your door. So you don't only use physical inputs of your audio interface. You can also use inputs that are coming from your door. For example, in my door, I configure that some submix or group will be routed to the SPDIF output, which is door 11 in my particular case, in my interface. So I select this door 11 to be here on this fader. This fader I call reamp out, which comes from my door. My group is called reamp out and it's here. So I just, in this reamp mix, I just up this fader. Best is to just go to zero. And then I have it on I just take this down as well. And then I can send it to this main out of my reamp mix. And as you can see here, I have routed this reamp mix to the SPDIF output, to the left channel. Everything is fine on my Kemper profiler. If I select the input to be this reamp SPDIF input, then everything will work fine. And I will see the Kemper levels here. And in the monitor mix, in my studio monitor, I just unmute it up and then I hear all this beautiful reamped guitar. So that's the basic concept, how you can route. Of course, you could also, instead of using this reamp mix to send it to the left SPDIF channel, you could also go pretty much direct. Yeah? Instead of using a mix, you could also select door 11 and route this directly from your door to the SPDIF output. Typically, I don't do that because sometimes I want to have a little bit of fun, <laughs> reamp something else, want to send something to the camper so I can play it through some rigs. For example, if I have a nice distortion and maybe I love this uh, rotary effect then I could send my keyboard to the camper and reamp some organ sound, some Hammond sound, whatever. So I prefer to use the reamp mix. And this way, when I look at the reamp mix and I want to play my core Kronos through the camper, then I do like that. So I send the Kronos to the reamp mix. And the reamp mix goes to the SPDIF. And then in my monitor mix, again, I just listen to the camper and I hear my reamped or amped <laughs> keyboard sound. And of course, you can do this for all inputs. Yeah? If, if you want to experiment, if you have some violin player in your studio and he wants to try how does it sound when I play violin through a slightly distortion, maybe, hmm, let's just experiment a little bit. Perfectly fine, you can do that. So that's the reason why I love the option to have several mixes here. I use them a lot. I also use them to route stuff to outboard gear. For example, here you can see one input 
that is called Strymon. So often when I play some keyboard stuff on my Kronos, I'm not so fond of the built-in effects and I want to use some Strymon effects. I have this uh, Mobius timeline and Big Sky, like one big chain. And then I can just send the core Kronos, for example here. I make my own mix and I call this like Strymon mix. And then I can send instead of the Kemper, I use the Kronos. So, okay, and now the Kronos goes out to the Strymon mix. And the Strymons are connected. So, where have I connected them? Let's just say I have connected them here. On the line output 3 and 4 are connected to the stereo inputs of my Strymons. So, I'll just send this Strymon mix left and Strymon mix right to these outputs of my interface. And then I can properly hear the Strymon coming back through the corresponding inputs where I connected my Strymons. So they're pretty complex setups is possible there. And I really love that, but I know that it's a little bit difficult in the beginning to get the hang of it. But once you really get into it, it's so powerful, so helpful that you don't have to do direct routing, direct routing from a specific door, channel, or output, or group, or whatever, to the interface. You can use this mixer. It's really nice. And uh, the only downside is that when you have a, or if you have a, uh, one of the higher inputs interfaces, then you quickly run out of faders here because that's a limited number of faders that are available to you. Basically, it's uh, how many? Uh, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 20 channels, 20 mono channels or 10 stereo channels. And of course, I have way more inputs. And if I connect plenty of stuff, then I can use cannot use everything at the same time, so a little bit of planning. Yeah. There would be no reason to listen to the DI in a monitor mix or in a Q mix or something to the DI input from my camper, for example. I could remove that and put, for example, a different microphone, yeah, like the second microphone, MIG-2, and uh, that would be connected to analog in two. Yeah, so I don't waste my mixer inputs of the mix control for stuff that I only want to record. I don't want to monitor it. I don't want it to send it to a Q mix uh, for any of the musicians or stuff like that. You just need to plan a little bit what you use and what you don't use. Okay. I hope this was a little bit dif uh, helpful. <laughs> Difficult it was for sure as well. <laughs> but uh, yeah, just try to get the hang of it, try to name your mixes, uh, try to understand how you can switch a stereo mix to a mono mix, so you don't have to, for example, if you want to reamp your Kemper profiler, you don't have to deal with all this kind of left panning and stuff and whatever. And just do a mono mix, send this one particular mono channel, the DI track that you have recorded in your DAW, send it to a reamp mix, like here, where I have this reamp mix, and uh, from the door 11 output, in my case, it will go into this mixer. And I just up this here. I know, I, I said this before. <laughs> anyway, just to recap. Um, yeah, and now this goes out of the reamp mix, and the reamp mix is sent to the SPDIF output, and everything is fine. And you're still flexible and can change whatever you want to send to your camper. Yeah? All right, that's it for now. This was Martin speaking. <laughs> Have fun trying it. It's really, really powerful. You should not skip that options because that's really, really helpful. Okay, bye-bye. See you guys. <laughs>